We could say that mental health is the elephant in our Swedish society room. You are high performing students, you have probably experienced stress and sometimes lighter anxiety, even problems with sleep. This is not unusual and something we can handle on our own most of the time. But in, in a worse form, it is a social problem called mental illness with human suffering and very costly uh, for the society. Our Swedish men uh, approach to mental health is not really working. Uh, direct and indirect costs now amount to 5% of GDP and over 200 billion uh, Swedish crowns a year. Sporadic initiatives over time have not resulted in decrease of mental illness. A quarterly policy at best only have temporary positive effects. At worst, creates system errors reinforcing already poorly functioning operations. Ineffective, uh, effective coordination and cooperation between healthcare, social services and schools. So, what is mental health actually? It's a daily used expression for different mental states. It covers a scale from good mental health to mental illness. And with the subgroups, mental well-being, mental disorder and psychiatric conditions. Uh, it sounds very frightening when you talk about it this way, but I mean, th this is the way it's uh, supposed to be explained. And uh, mental well-being is, of course, the, the normal state for us, where we want to be and we usually are. Uh, mental disorder is something that we, uh, are, uh, uh, we, we meet it from time to time in our life and we have to handle it. It can be uh, bad love, it could be grief, it could be bad economy, whatever. But normally we handle it and we come up on the other side. Uh, then we have the psychiatric conditions, anxiety syndromes, depression, sleeping disorder. It's also a condition we can avoid if we seek help in time. Stigma is an underestimated factor affecting the increase of mental illness. The consequences of the stigma surrounding mental illness are serious. It affects how you look at yourself, consider yourself less worth, low self-esteem and avoid seeking help. You feel ashamed, who am I to seek help? It could be how the outside world see it, negative attitudes towards people with mental health problem or in, even if you start talking about it. Uh, poorer treatment from mental and physical care. Um, it's an unfortunately a fact. Issues surrounded by stigma do not receive the same political attention. And I have two examples. Uh, the National Helpline shut down 2019. It's something nobody understands that are informed of this. And the National Suicide Zero Vision from 2008 uh, didn't really result in any decrease. So how can we reduce the stigma? It's simple. And I think it has been up on uh, previous speeches here tonight, which I am very impressed of. Um, I'm, I was also surprised because they, they really took up this uh, subject. Talk about it. Uh, show who you are. Dare to take the step and be honest. Um, it's proven we can reduce the stigma by talking openly about mental illness and problems connected. It doesn't need to be the worst. But we need to take a step and be brave. 
Unfortunately, mental disorder among the young generation, our future, um, is a big problem. And a big portion of the population reports severe symptoms of anxiety, worry, and distress. Uh, the numbers are not 100%, we have to uh, remember that. Uh, and it's due to shortcoming in research. But still, it's, it's a strong indication and uh, a call for action. Um, it is uh, a striking difference between girls and boys, women and men. Um, it's believed that girls more often seek help, probably more open, uh, and boys pretend to keep it for themselves. Girls also feel more pressure from social media, but once again, <coughs> research is lacking here. Uh, I will come back to that later. Almost 50% of all 13 to 24 year olds have pessimistic view on the future. I, I don't think this is correct, but it, once again, it's in, it is an indication. But this uh, has improved during the pandemic and probably because we, can, we have been able to relax more and uh, we didn't uh, need to rush up in the morning every day and etc. etc. I don't know, but it, it, it has an improvement here. Uh, however, gener Generation Z or Gene C, I think it's called, is it correct? <laughs> uh, uh, believe that society is heading in the wrong direction. And, and uh, I don't know what you think about that. Uh, I can think that it has to do with, uh, you know, going after the money, you look after yourself, etc. I don't know, but I, I think they know what they talk about. Uh, young Swedes, 18 to 24 years, have the lowest mental well-being among all European Union, Union countries. When it comes to children and young people, research and preventative care has been neglected since a very long time. And this is, this is a fact. But luckily, now the subject has uh, got a great attention again. So people are really seeing that this has been not treated well for a very long time in, in the history. And it has, it has probably to do with the view on uh, children and young people. So we, we have had the, the you know, generations we talked about before, which are you know, the master at home with cigarettes for guests and lighters, etc., etc. <laughs> so, uh, it's a long theory here, but I think it has some base for it. Uh, factors that are affecting the increase in mental uh, illness. Um, in 2019, 15% of the Swedish population with low economic standard exceeded 15% in our a country with this high standard, there is more than 50% people, 50% of the, of the population that has low economic uh, standard. Uh, in August 21, 133,000 young people were unemployed. 15% of the students leave school without full degree, mostly boys. Still, education is the key to future. So. These are a little bit worrying numbers. The school is another uh, question here. Maybe not here, but uh, I mean, before you come to this uh, super place. Uh, the school must have, had, uh, have the same security and good working environment uh, as workplaces in general. Why should we see it different? I mean, when we grow up, we go to work, we have the union, we have uh, security, we have everything. If we should have the same problem they have in the classroom sometimes, it would be hell of a fight uh, or discussion. So, 
um, we have a difficult to understand grading system that creates stress. We have messy and noisy classrooms. Uh, teachers need needs to spend time getting the class organized. Six out of ten students are disturbed by classmates. It's not an acceptable situation. And when it comes to bullying, we have uh, statistics saying about 60,000 young people each year are exposed to bullying. So uh, these are really worrying numbers. Um, and I might add that the government also had uh, come up with uh, a plan now to make, should we say, law and order in schools and to bring back uh, a safe environment, uh, which is very good. When it comes to sports and, and leisure, we have 15% of, uh, of the young people from 11 to uh, 15 years are overweight. This is an increasing number also. We didn't have that before in Sweden. In the US they were always overweight because they drank Coca-Cola and eat hamburgers. Now we do the same. So, uh, and we sit and we game. I don't have anything against gaming. I think it's super, but it takes a little bit too much, too long time. And uh, I have to make a little pass here. Uh, when Tim was young, he used to uh, game a lot. And uh, I was forced, to, me and my wife was forced to take away the computer several times because it was unacceptable. And um, it was a big fight at home every time. And uh, the normal evening was, we said good night, you have to go to bed now, don't sit up and game, no, no, no. So he was uh, closed his door put out his light. So when I came up in the kitchen, I saw <laughs> in the door that the light was there. So he was, he was, it, it, it's funny now, but I mean, it was a problem then, really. Uh, so if I should point out something really important here, here uh, and uh, tonight when I heard all the other speeches, sleep and recovery, I would say, is the most important good factor um, so, if, if you care about your sleep and your recovery, you will probably live a very long life. So, it's a life insurance, really. Uh, okay, so. uh, the sad part, prolonged mental illness can, in its most extreme form, lead to suicide. Uh, it's a tragedy when young people see no other solution to a complicated life situation than to take their own life. But it can be prevented, I must say that very clearly here. And there is help available. So you should really never hesitate to seek help when you feel or think, have thoughts about uh, yeah, deep thoughts uh, or are in trouble, or you hear a friend talking about it, whatever, take it seriously, absolutely. Three young people take their lives in Sweden uh, every week. It's absolutely unacceptable and unnecessary. Research and information must be prioritized and fully financed over time. Uh, I said I'm taking three slides on this. It, it's really a sad part, but, but we have to discuss that also openly. That's, that's a fact. And as you see here over time, despite the national zero vision, is, uh, as I mentioned before, numbers are more or less the same. It's going up and it's going down, but it, it's, it's a level that uh, is uh, sort of uh, the same. So with improved and more effective preventative measures, the numbers will be significantly reduced. Absolutely, there is no uh, discussion about that. So there's a lot to do here. And this uh, picture doesn't need any comments.
Mental illness is also uh, very expensive and uh, it causes uh, sick leave and uh, um, in general very, very long sick leave and repeated sick leave. So, um, and you can see the, the, the statistics here showing that it's really going up too much. Um, Mental illness costs huge uh, sums every year, 5% of our GDP, over 2 million billion uh, Swedish uh, crowns. The government made an investigation a few years ago to get, the bottom, to get to the bottom of the status of mental illness and to set a strategy with the intention of improving the status. Below are some conclusions, but we are still waiting for the issue to be raised higher up in the priority list of, uh, among politicians. 18,000 uh, children do not go to school in Sweden today due to mental illness. 10 billion Swedish crowns has been invested in measures against mental illness for 10 years, yet sickness rates have increased. Between 2009 and 2018, expenditure on mental illness in health insurances has more than doubled. Uh, psychiatric diagnosis today account for 70% of the cost of sick leave. The insurance company Scandia estimates mental illness cost uh, around 142 billion in 2010 and 345 million 2030. So it's, uh, as you study economics, it's a great potential for cost saving here, I can tell you. So what are we waiting for? I don't know. Uh, so what needs to be done? A fundamental change is, uh, sorry, to start something new, you have to end something old. That, that, that's a very important line. A fundamental, a fundamental change is required in the state's way of governing the school system, care and nursing. A 10-year strategy is required where you can go from reactive, put out fires, to proactive, preventative thinking across the board. Preventative action are undoubtedly the most effective ones. Uh, implementation of the 10-year strategy, sustainable, well-financed and clearly communicated goals. This is not really what we are used to from politicians, because they can change goals uh, from day to day. Mental health uh, must be compulsory subject uh, in elementary school, gymnasium and university. It is also proven that education, even uh, when it starts early, education uh, reduce mental illness. So the more we learn about it, the more we talk about it, it will be a little bit of a self-repairing <laughs> system, so to say. And uh, with this big amount and uh, the big cost, uh, I think it's natural that a mental health minister should be appointed with full mandate to be in charge of this operation. Uh, despite my crit critical view on how mental illness is, uh, is managed, I am optimistic. Uh, the parliament and government are fully aware of the situation and the need for urgent implementation and a long-term plan. They all know exactly what to do here, and, and they also know that they are a little bit fire in their backs because they, 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 this has gone so far, and they are going to do something, absolutely. And things are, are beginning, uh, you know, a little bit here and there. So I, I would say it, it's a positive um, view. We are waking up and understand that the key is cooperation throughout the society. We cannot uh, work uh, in, I don't know what you call it, uh, down spots, or, or how, how do you say, you know, when, when you, ah, um, you, you don't share your, uh, your views, you don't share your, uh, you don't cooperate, 
uh, you don't spread your money, you, you put it in, in I, I think it's called downspots, but oh, okay. Um, uh, you and I must also take the responsibility. So we have a personal responsibility here. And when it's needed, I come back to that, dare to talk about problems and dare to listen to our fellow human being. And remember, do not hesitate to get help if you feel very sad or you are getting into a problem you cannot handle. Take help. Therapy is very good, I can tell you. And um, together, we will push the mental illness elephant out of the society room. Thank you for listening. Thank you.